Ons het 800 species in Zuid-Afrika. In die wereld is daar meer dan 6000 van hierdie species. Maar van al die fascinerende miskrijerspecies is daar net 10% wat misbolle rol. Maar hoe kom? Dit is die eerste vraag wat de klompie wetenskapelik is ook wat kopkrap het. Om weg te kom van die competitie natuurlijk. Vars mis is soos een oop buffet. Elkeen kan homself help aan soveel kos as wat hy kan dra. Maar jy moet vinnig skip, want andere wacht net vir die kans om jou kospakkie te steel. En hierdie miskrijers waarin ons vandag kyk, die bolrollers, eet nie by die restaurant nie. Hulle vat een wegneem eten, wat hulle ver weg gaan begrawe, en die kortste pad om vinnig ver weg te kom, is een regheid ene. Hierdie groepie wetenskapelikus is bezig met een navorsingsproject oor insekgedrag. Nou, soos julle kan sien, het hulle een baie ongewone plek gekies om hierdie experimente te doen. Ons is in die middel van Johannesburg, op een kunstmatige hockeyveld. Maar dit skep die perfecte omstandighede vir hierdie spesifieke navorsing. Die experiment vorm deel van een string onskadelike toetsen wat gedoen is om uit te vind hoe een miskreer sy kompas werk. So how does this actually tie into your research? The whole thing is, is we're trying to find out how animals use a compass. And we, we ourselves have to use a compass to find our way through the world. And we're fairly complex. Um, we can use celestial cues and we can also use landmarks. But these are much more simple animals. And uh, by picking apart their compass cues, we can learn how they find their way through the world. And now we're going to try it with you and see if you can find your way without a compass. And, and so what we're going to do here is illustrate that you have to have some external information to be able to keep in a straight line. Hulle dink, ek kan nie recht uit achteruit loop nie. Maar hoe moeilik kan het nou wees? So, you didn't do too badly. <laughs> So you miss, that's the goal you were aiming for. Ik heb klets to one goal. My orientatie en navigatie vermoens het my so waar in die steek gelaat. Maar wat het miskrijers nou eindelijk met de kompas uit te waai? Marie, wat een van die stichtersleden van die project is, verduidelik. We have a question. We want to understand how a biological compass works. So we need an animal that allows us to ask the questions we want to ask. So to me, the dung beetles, I mean, they're fascinating what they are doing, but to me, they're like a, a model animal. I need an animal that I can ask questions and then can then give me answers back. And the dung beetles are ideal for this. They will keep on doing what they're doing. I mean, they will roll their balls. We can, we can put caps on them. We can give them rubber balls to roll. Once you give them a ball, they will keep on going. And that is incredibly valuable if you want to ask questions repeatedly. The first experiment that the navorsers have done to bepaal how good miskrijers will self oriënteer behels om the keverse aarde onder om te draai. So I basically turned the world 90 degrees underneath its feet and it was able to immediately compensate and maintain its direction towards you. So what we think they're doing is we think they're looking at the sky continually, and so they're updating the system on a regular basis. Die navorsers gloe dat miskrijers opkyk om hulle self te oriënteer. Vooral as die bolrollers oor een groot hindernis gaan wat hulle van koers af kan gooi. Maar hoe kyk iets wat kop onderste boe loop op? Wel, die navorsers noem dit die dans van die miskrijer. En die dansie boop die misbol is hoe die kever homself op koers hou. Maar waarna kyk hy as hy so op sy bol klim? Ons moes een dansboffin sy hulp inroep. Well, we see that the dung beetles will always perform a dance just after they've made a, a ball of dung at the dung pile and just before they're about to roll it away. So there seems to be something important um, in it at that stage, but then we also see it in cases like this when they experience some sort of disturbance, such as falling off into a hole or running up against a, a, a clump of grass. And it seems as though they do it when they become disoriented or when they can no longer keep a straight line. Hulle vermoed dat die miskrijers as het ware een foto of een prentje van die licht neem en ons self daar volgens oriënteer. Om dan koers te hou, 
moet die kevers net op positie in die prentje constant hou en dan kan hulle in een rechtheid lijn beweeg. But the problem happens if they then become um, disoriented, they fall into a hole or fall off a ramp like this, and they lost contact, they lost the, being the capacity to keep the image constant, then they need to get back up on the ball and rematch that original image before they can keep going in a straight line. And this is all to get so far as possible, so far as possible, to come from the competition. Because it's very easy to get a ready-made to ball to steal as to your own one to roll. And the bakleier can so rough rock that the thing is very spat. <laughs> the best way to come back is to get your opponent on his rug to go. Nee, daai halve bol gaan nie werk nie. They are very persistent creatures. <laughs> en as hy nie wil hoor nie, dan moet hy maar vol. So 'n laaste rofstoe krygsbeweging sal die trick doen. Met die verloorder wat die aftog geblaas het, is daar kans om gouwe richting te kies en die prijs vinnig weg te rol. Om seker te maak dat die miskryers wel na iets boe hulle kyk om hulle self te oriënteer, het die wetenskapelikes die modewereld betree. Ok, so you've seen the guys orientating under the skylight. Yeah. So the question we're asking here now is do you need to be able to see the sky? So we put a hat on it. Yeah, exactly. Die hoed wat die proferie miskryer aantrek, is letterlik net een stikkie karton wat oor die kewe se koppie pas. So ja, dit maak hom nie seer nie. Dit verhoed net wat die miskryer kan sien. So we're doing a little bit of a dance, trying to peer under the hat. En die gedrag is precies wat die navorsers gedink het het sou wees. Die miskryer het nie die vaagste benul waar hy is nie, en probeer om onder die hoed uit te loer. Maar instink sê, hy moet wegkom. So that long dance already is suggesting that he's having difficulty getting navigational information. Now let's see if he can roll in a straight line. And you see he's immediately done a, a left hand turn towards you. Yes. Yeah, and he's come coming back to where he started. See so another big dance, mm -hmm. trying to throwing his head back, trying yeah. to pick up information. And it's interesting that when he lost control of the ball there, that's when he, he stopped. Yeah. But he's effectively now back where he started, which is exactly where you don't want to be when you're a dung beetle, and there's a lot of other people that are going to steal your lunch. And he's lost his hat. So let's see what he does now. A little short dance. And he's off. Found the direction. Yep. So, hulle gebruik definitief al sig om na iets in die hemelruim te kyk. En natuurlijk is daar een groot richting aanwijzer wat ons allemaal kan gebruik vir oriëntatie. Goed, so die wetenskapelikes het nou vastgestel dat hulle dink dat die miskryers die son gebruik om hulle richting te bepaal. En om dit nou te bevestig, gaan ons kyk of ons die son sy richting kan omkeer. Ja, so let's do this. Ok, on three, one, two, three. Uh, stop hy. En hy draai om. So explain this experiment to us, professor. So, the question was, what are they looking at in the sky? So we put a cap on him, and he, could, he got lost, and the obvious thing that they could be looking at in the sky is the sun. So should we go off again? One, two, three. It's very, very clear that if we shift the direction of the sun 180 degrees, he flicks back in the opposite direction. Should we go again? Yep. On three, one, two, three. So he must be looking at the sky the whole time and orientating himself relative to the position of the sun. And then as soon as we change the position of the sun, then he has to reorientate himself because he thinks he's made an orientation error. That is so cool. Maar makers hulle het gesien dat miskryers op baie warm dae meer gereeld op hulle misballe klim. And what are we going to check now? Well, what we're interested in here is um, it's a thermoregulatory behavior that we've 
discovered at the same time. So not only are they rolling the ball to move it away from competition and to bury their valuable resource, but they're able to use it as a way of escaping a hot surface. Uh, so it's a completely different job it's doing, but it's using the ball, using its ball rolling behavior. Do a little dance. And I see it looks like it's rubbing its face as well. Yeah. So if you watch co closely, you'll see that it rubs the underside of its head with its front legs. And what we think it's doing is spitting onto its front legs. And then with that saliva, it's smearing it over the bottom of its head. And then that evaporates from the head and keeps the brain cool. Okay. So he's not really stopping because he wants to reorientate. He's stopping because he needs to take a little breather and literally to chill. What the navorsers do do is to go back to the mode in the street to get back. But this time, by a schoonmaker. So we are planning to give them boots on the front legs so when they are rolling on a hot soil or hot uh, ground that they are actually protected from the heat. Okay. And yeah, I thought you can help me. Okay, yeah, no, that would be cool. <laughs> die schoenen bestaan uit diezelfde type silicon wat tandartse diestal gebruik en is dus skadeloos vir die miskryer. Na die keverse voorpote met water skoongemaak is, word die silicon gemeng en op die pijnkies van die pootjies gesmeer. This is what it looks like then. A paar prachtige groen handgemaakte skoene. Ek het in my leven nog nooit gedink ek gaan vir a miskryer stevels aantrek nie. This beetle that has boots on, it shouldn't show, so, or it will actually not show so many scratches. Okay. Or not at all. Well, let's see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, he will. <laughs> okay, now they. Hey, toch. Jalousie is daar maar lelike ding. Nooit tevrede met wat de mens het nie. En die bakleierij wou nie stop nie. So, ons moes die twee boos wichte weg van mekaar neersit om voor te gaan met die experiment. En so waar, die gestevelde kever klim glad nie op sy bol nie. Want nou word sy pote teen die warm oppervlakte beskerm. Rustig rol hy voort, asof dit glad nie een snikjete dag is nie. Terwyl die ene sonder stevels gereeld op sy bol klim en speeksel op sy pote sit om af te koel. En mens al sweer, hy is die ene wat die dans kunne aan het. Usually we don't think of insects as intelligent beings. Mm. So you, if you want to ask questions to, um, to dung beetles, mm. how do they actually solve problems? Well, they, I mean, just looking at a dung beetle, first of all, they need to fly, and that is fairly complicated. So they need to solve that. Then they need to find the dung pile. They do that using smell. Then they need to form a ball, and then they need to have a strategy to keep the ball to themselves. And they do this with a brain that is as small as the head of, of a needle. So what they do that is really fascinating is that they filter out all the information that is not important at that very moment. This is what most insects do, and this is why they can cope with such a small uh, brain. And this is what we also want to understand, because if you look at your mobile phone, for example, you want to use as small processors, as little power as possible, to solve a given problem. And this is what the insects are already doing. So we can get a simple answer to a fairly complicated question, because they have made the world simple in order to be able to cope in it. The uiteinde van experimenten soos hierdie. Experimenten is met dierkies met eenvoudige breinkies. Is die ontwikkeling van hoogsgevorderde technologie. Technologie soos een onbemande vliegtuig wat die miskryerse oriëntering dier middel van die son naboots. Het is eigenlijk ongelooflik om te denken dat die mens een specie met so'n hoogs ontwikkelde brein na sulke klein primitieve dierkies gaan om antwoorde te soek. En dis maar nog net die pijnkie van die ijsberg. Daar is nog een legio vraag wat antwoorde soek. Het is eigenlijk verbazend dat so'n klein dierkie met so'n primitieve breinkie die mens nog steeds laat kopkrap. <laughs>